So all these little creeks yeah. are going to be full of water. Yep. This is all going to be swampy country through here as well. So um, they can't even give us a report on. No, they've got no idea. They take a tractor in. Yeah. When they right now we're in Cape York, just outside Cohen, and final preparations are being made for the trip of a lifetime. But as far as being open to the public, this is one of those places in the Cape that the public don't even know about, much less. Yeah, right. Tomorrow morning, mate, we get packed up straight away and on the road, I reckon. Mate, sounds like a Easy plan. as. Listen, folks, I am such a big fan of prior preparation because as far as I'm concerned, it's the difference between a good trip, don't get me wrong, and a trip that you will remember for the rest of your life. Now, look, we've been in touch with some traditional owners. We're just outside of Cohen, camped on the riverbank right now. At 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, mate, we get permission to head west out to the coast from Cohen on a track called the Stony Creek Track. We don't know if we're going to make it yet. In fact, even the locals, even the traditional owners, don't know if we're going to make it out there. And here's the important bit, that if we make it and all goes well, we'll be opened up to the public for everyone else to come and enjoy. Shall I? Tell you what, mate, I think I speak on behalf of you. Yeah. This is a trip of a lifetime. Mate. I'm super excited. This is the stuff Sean and I absolutely live for. And tomorrow morning, we get to live out our dreams. For me, tomorrow can't come quick enough. I'm going to have one or two more beers. We're going to have a barbecue. I'm getting me swag. Let the games begin. Can't wait for tomorrow, mate. Let's do it. The Stony Creek track is approximately 110 kilometres in length and it runs from the development road just north of Cohen out through the dividing range all the way to the east coast of Cape York. This is going to be one of the most amazing four-wheel drive adventures. Looking for a mad deal on the gear that you're chasing? Like this awning, I've got you covered. Keep an eye out throughout this video for an exclusive discount code and get 10% off store-wide for all four-wheel drive Supercenter YouTube subscribers. And as always, enjoy this adventure because this is an epic trip. It's day one of the trip and we're meeting up with the traditional owners because they've not only given us permission to access this track, but would like to welcome us with a traditional smoking ceremony. When we welcome people to country, um, our kind of country, we use the ironwood leaf and put the leaf down on them. This is Dion. He's one of the TOs for the region and a member of Cullen Enterprises, which is an organisation that helps create and implement community development initiatives within the Cohen community. He and Carlin Enterprises do some amazing work in the region to help support the local people and also manage the land for a sustainable future. One of Dion's latest plans is to open the Stony Creek track up to us four-wheel drivers and turn it into one of the Cape's most iconic four-wheel drive adventures. And that right there is where we come in. We're going to be blazing the trail. I wish you a safe trip and help you bring your vehicles back in one piece. It's going to be rough, but you know, I think with the amount of guys, vehicles you've got in, See you guys got a lot of good accessories there, so I think this, this should be okay. Joining me, I've got a great team for the task ahead. We've got Justin and Shane from NQ Crashing Cans, of course my old mate Stuart from Wholesale Automatics, Shauno from Four Wheel Drive Action, and Ray Clark, a Cape York resident who lives and breathes this stuff. If anyone is going to make it to the end of this track, it's this bunch of blokes right here. Well, boys, that was quite the introduction to a track. I don't think I've, uh, I've actually had an introduction very similar in the Kimberley before. I reckon it always feels good. You sort of, I don't know, you've been sent off with good tidings. Yeah, mate, I feel pretty good in here, mate. It's certainly different. Uh, first time we've experienced that. I'm quite looking forward to it. It certainly feels like a privilege to be here, that's for sure. I think that's the key word there, mate. Privilege to be here. We're the first in for two years or so. The first, certainly the first this year. None of the boys have been in this year. And last year they only went in once, they were telling me, so we're, uh, we're the first people down this track for a very, very long time. Uh, it's a couple of times I've done this now, I had the chance to do something like this, and I, I never get sick of it. It's just a feeling of anticipation to get out of the coast. That's the key. This looks to me like our very first decent-ish river since we left the Peach River and the boys back there after the smoking ceremony. I'll tell you what, you can really see. Look at that. It must have been a sight and a half during the wet. Now we go up the other side of the bank, you can still see all the flood damage on this side here. This track will cross literally hundreds of creeks along the way, and we're expecting many of them to be washed out and eroded by the massive wet seasons they get up here. Some of these creeks might be impassable, but we've come prepared with winches, we've got recovery kits, shovels, not to mention a whole lot of determination to get us through. Oh, 
I might take a slightly different line to you, mate. That you just collapsed into that. I'm not sure how much I've got to move with here. Yeah, I'm driving the Isuzu D Max, and look, so far I am really impressed with how it's handling the terrain. Go the D Max! Yes! <laughs> Ray, the poor old bloke, is having to travel with Shauno in the Dirty 30. But up the rear, they're towing Ray's side-by-side -side ATV. Now, that thing can go almost anywhere, and it'll be deployed to scout ahead if we need it. Pretty soon, and we've reached the end of what is actually a gazetted road, believe it or not. There's no trespassing. Well, we don't need to worry about that sign, fortunately. So long as you've contacted Carlin Enterprises, you won't have to worry about this sign either. It's pretty obvious to us that no one's been past this point. I mean, it's been blocked by a fallen tree, and that tree looks like it's been here for quite some time. It's phenomenal termite damage. Woohoo! Pretty tight through there. This is actually an exciting point of the trip, of course, because beyond here is the track we've come to drive. Up till this point right here, we've seen other tracks. People have come to this sign, they've read the sign, they don't have permission, they've turned around and gone back. From here on in, crikey, this is what we came to do. Woohoo! Make sure that rear wheel doesn't hit it, that's not what we want. Nicely done, that's me on the track. Ray's modified this trailer so that it's ideal for this type of adventure. It's as tough as it looks, so I'm pretty sure it'll go anywhere the Dirty 30 will take it. Nicely done, mate. Stu threads the needle last with no hassles. It's time to get stuck into this track. Trouble is, though, we haven't gone far when we come up on an awkward little creek. Justin and Shane are in the NQ crash GU patrol, and they've been busting to get away from their busy workshop and put this beast through its paces. Now, because we have to drive up this creek and then hook a hard right, it's difficult to get any momentum. However, the D-Max is really surprising me. It's got fast, smooth acceleration on demand, and it's making this look easy. No problem at all. Oh, the little D-Max, eh? Hey? Wow, that is real tight and twisty down through there. Of course, this is a creek line coming through here. We've got several coming up. We've actually been going adjacent to the creeks for a bit now. We're about to turn head a bit more east. And of course, go across a lot more creeks. You can see them through here now, and they're really overgrowing. Shauna's doing a good job with that trailer, and I think all right? that's yeah. just one of many, it's many, nice. many creek crossings like that to come. Sean 60 is towing that trailer with no dramas at all. It's just built for it, and I've got to say, even though it's a Toyota, how darn tough does it look? It does, mate. It does love it. It's Stu's first time up the Cape, and it looks like he's taking it all in his stride. Nice driving, mate. Thanks, Stu. Second smoking ceremony for the day. Well, we are right in the thick of it now, across the gate into this country right here, which hasn't seen another vehicle quite some time. I know that because the tracks out here leave quite an impression when you drive over them. There's a lot of dead grass in front of us, sandy country. There's no tire tracks whatsoever. Over here, to my left-hand side, we're just starting to see the first hills of the Great Dividing Range. Now we've come through a whole heap of river crossings up here. We're now just going to go adjacent to them for a bit before we turn hard east and then we cross a whole heap more. The runoff straight down off that Great Dividing Range suggests to me that these creeks down here are going to receive a lot of water during the wet. You know what that means. Heck of a lot of erosion. Unbeknown to us, we're about to come upon our first challenging little climb. As predicted, it was covered in ruts and erosion gullies that are caused by rainfall. It's not enough to swallow a full drive, but enough to stop one. Yeah. This is going to be lovely. Justin's up first, and with all eyes on the job, the boys are trying their best to stay out of the deeper ruts. Reckon? Yeah, good job, lads. You really made that look easy. I didn't even know the hill was there. Yeah, we did. You could <laughs> tell. You could tell you were puckering, though. With Justin out the front spotting, I'm trying to watch him and react while still keeping the momentum going. Okay, so I didn't miss all the ruts, but the traction control system on the D-Max is doing its thing and doing it well. And we've managed to claw all the way to the top. Go with that D-Max!
with the weight of the trailer and the ATV on the back, it's acting like a huge anchor. I reckon he's going to need a different approach. I think you're going to need to flog it, eh? Because you've just got the trailer on flat ground and you're going up ruts. Yeah. <laughs> so you're just going to have to flog it. Yeah, bounce over that first bit. That 60 is just a beast when it wants to be. Check that out. 60, yeah. Into it. Coming all the way from Victoria, Stu is definitely used to driving hills, but I think the amount of ruts up here has really taken him by surprise. <laughs> Check that out. He's getting thrown around in there like a rag doll. Woohoo! Where'd that come from? <laughs> I think it's his. Found oh, out the road, mate. You're going to have it back. Come yeah, cool screws. Yeah. Yeah. All good. Uh, back cool on. Cool First piece of damage for the yeah. weekend. Yeah. Good drive, mate. It was yeah. a good drive. Mate, yeah. yours was a bit better than mine, mate. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> a lot no, more dust good. anyway. Yeah. And Stu, mate, what a ride. Yeah. What, what was the horn oh. for? Is that just to let us know you're coming through? <laughs> yeah, you're coming yeah. through. Get yeah. yeah. out the way. Get out the way. All right, you can't stand here. Let's go. As we push our way further down the track towards the east coast, we're on the lookout for some ruins that once belonged to the late family members of the traditional owners of this land. We've been asked to beep our horns once we find the ruins to let the spirits know that we're here. It's a sign of respect. What's that over there? Well, it's like the old ruins as described by that lady. Best we should honk our horns and let him know we're here. Tell you what, I reckon everyone knows we're here now. Wow, check that out, they are really going for it. It's not uncommon to come across huge scrub balls out here, but you do have to be a bit careful because they can be quite aggressive, as we witnessed here with two males having a brawl. Man, these are tough creatures. Imagine trying to catch one of these things during a muster. By now it's getting late in the day and we're on the lookout for a camp. Now there are no designated camping areas down here just yet where the first one's through, but once Dion and the boys open it all up, there will be designated camping sites. For now, we're just looking for anything that's reasonably open and flat and not in a swampy area. Just after the sun had dropped, we'd found a decent spot and Sean, well, he's read my mind. A cold beer from the Waco is on the cards where we get set up and get ready for dinner. Well, Shano's on chef's duty tonight. He's got ingredients for pizzas, and I've got ingredients for everything I need, mate. I've got Cape York, four-wheel drives, campfire, and a cold beer. I tell you, you add pizzas to that, mate. we've got ourselves a winner. There's a few of us on this trip with the Adventure King swag, and it's not surprising. I mean, these things are the go in hot, humid environments. You've got plenty of room inside to move around and also have some breathing space. Well, I won't lie. I'm actually a bit knackered tonight. It's been a big day, we've been on the road for, road, I should say the track, when there was a track there, for the better part of 12 hours today. Now, Sean knows the chef tonight, but he's gone and stashed all his ingredients in my drawers, the cheeky bugger. Didn't even see him do it. I gotta say though, I am looking forward to this, I'm starving. <laughs> sliced jalapenos, you can't have a pizza without sliced jalapenos. Well, we're on the east coast of Cape York and we're making pizzas. You know, there's one thing that would make this just that little bit better. What? Or something um, we haven't got here. What, another pizza? Well, yeah. <laughs> that that let's, would be helpful. Make another, Look at that. You, you started another pizza. I'll grab the other ingredient. Okay. That'll be you. Now we're making our own bases today because it's a bit hard to travel when you're camping with with big pre-made bases, and I reckon they taste better anyway. There's no right or wrong measurements when you come to this because you can always add more water, more flour, more everything. About a cup and a half, say. What for one of these pizza bases? Yeah, to make one you know, man-sized pizza. Mm. Lukewarm water in my kettle, three quarters of a cup. We need some yeast, one sachet, which is about a tablespoon. Did you just say sachet? Sachet. Sachet. It's pronounced different in Queensland, mate. <laughs> a teaspoon of salt. It's, it's actually black salt, folks. It's, it's It really not, is. It black is. cypress. Yeah. I don't know, it must be in the gourmet section, it's mate. It's in the gourmet, I don't know what we were doing there. Reminds me of carving season back in Southwest WA, this does. Make no mess at all when you do it this way. But we're halfway there. What we're going to do now is we cook one side of the base. We're going to cook it over the barbecue plate here so it's going to have a nice crisscross pattern. That's just to let the heat come up anyway. Can I slide in there, mate? I've just got to put sure. my bacon on. 
There you go, mate. It's been about five minutes. As soon as I flip this, it's, it's a quick it's a quick process. So battle. so battle stations. Yep. Come on. Hey. We'll need tomato paste. Here we go. Here we go. What's next? Look at this. Cheese. Do you want Cheese. olives? Olives, great, yeah. Do you want pineapple? Yes. 50-50 the pineapple. Uh, what cheese. 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 cheese, 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 okay. Cheese. Good cheese. Parmesan cheese. Go. We're going all out tonight, guys. You can use anything to cover it. I'm going to cover it to try and keep the heat coming up and try and cook the top as the bottom cooks. Believe me when I say, folks, if I had not seen that work, trust me, I would not have believed it did. Oh! See, this is what I'm talking about, folks. You oh. wouldn't think it would work. There we go, that's done. Campfire pizza. It's easy to make, it's great for the whole family. Woo! <laughs> Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with incredible deals on Adventure King's camping and outdoor gear. Take your camping experience to the next level with the amazing Grand Tourer Mark III aluminium rooftop tent. The rooftop tent that practically sets itself up. King's portable gazebos are built ultra strong with a tough steel frame, are easy to set up even by yourself and are available in multiple sizes for the campsite or the job site. The incredible new 270 degree freestanding awning can be set up in just 40 seconds and wraps around the side and the back of your car for incredible amounts of shelter. Hit the water on a King's inflatable stand up paddleboard for an insane amount of fun at the beach, the river or the dam. But warning, it's highly addictive. Plus there's fridges, solar panels and more to make every adventure incredible. At Full Drive Supercenter you get more for less. It's the morning of day two and we're already into it. The pace has been slowing down due to the challenges becoming more difficult. So we needed to get an early start to try and claw back some time. On the left, is it? Yeah, it's pouring into it, mate. Um, I don't know. I might uh, put the lockers on, I think, for this to try and get me straight through and out of it. I'll, have, I'll let you know in a sec. The erosion around this small creek is amazing. The exit is completely undercut. Wow, wowzers. That's quite the hole. I'm gonna get a bit of ball some balls now. Okay, thanks, Carl. You nearly got it. Oh, a bigger one. Yeah, one, one more run up and you got it. Oh, that's a good effort. That is nasty. Mate, what a top drive. I saw wheels in the air, I saw smoke, dust, I saw everything. Right now, it's my turn. Let's do this. It's a big bank. It's a very big bank, but remember the chance. Look at that, though. The D-Max handles it amazingly well. I'm through. D-Max! Max for the win. Now, Sean is doing the right thing and he's taking it easy for the first time just to get a feel for it. There's no Go way he wants to tip that trailer over. Now that he knows what the trailer's going to do, Sean's going to give it some mumbo. Oh, Struth, what a wheel lift. He's through and so is the trailer and both are totally unscathed. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, there's that hole again! Get up there. Stew's up, and he's not quite got the clearance on that line. He wants a pipe lock on. Yeah, he's hit the lockers, and there you go. That made all the difference. He's got drive to all wheels, and one of them got the traction that he needed. Yeah. He's going to want to slow down. <laughs> So it's an old wreck up here, fellas. Mate, it is, it's an old patrol. You might be able to get some spare parts off of yours. This is an old bull catcher. It's actually a modified Nissan G60 patrol. And this thing would have been used to smash its way through the dense bush oh, in chase of prized bulls back in the day. It's really quite a find. You need a tough truck to catch a tough animal. Absolute weapon. You know what? It really impresses me. What's that, mate? The bar works in great nick. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Nissan. It's absolutely <laughs> falling to pieces. You know why you see these out here? Now, this is this is a true fact, folks, at home. We're not, I'm not having a go at Sean at the moment. The reason you do see old G60s out here is because these cars actually opened up the country. 
for tourists to come through in their Toyotas with the aircon on and enjoy the sights through the windscreen. <laughs> You'll notice this doesn't even bother with a windscreen. Men were tough back then, they drove G60s. The difference would be, the Toyota wouldn't be here. It would be back at the homestead, still going, because that's what they do, they keep going. Nine out of ten Toyotas on the road aren't there anymore. I said that you joke wrong. Make, you, just make, you just make stats up, do you now? Wine. <laughs> right, oh boys, come on. Let's get out of here. Yeah, Let's good go mate. that way. Whoa. Now that is some serious erosion. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have a look at this before I go drive down here. I reckon your line is directly off that. Just, just gotta get a lot of speed. Oh. Yep. It's all gonna be about flex here. <laughs> oh, it's I don't the obstacle. I'll, I don't know if I'll get down here with a quad bike on. Before we even bring a truck down, let's take it off up there. You, you can get around here, piece of pie. Yeah, yeah. And then wobble down here and jump in with the VMS. Yep. Make sure you're on the track. Done. Okay. It was let's time it. to deploy the scout. We wanted to send Ray out with the VMS to get a clear indication that this was in fact the track and not just a means it's to VMS, accessing mate. a creek yeah, close mate. to here. Of course, Sean I couldn't help himself. I mean, I suppose someone's got to read the map, right? Off they go, and because of its narrow width, the ATV can just about squeeze around that huge hole. Here's that creek and it seems they've spotted a track out the other side. They're off to investigate. As for me, well, I might as well make the most of this creek while I'm here. For the boys in the ATV, the tracks seem to be getting brighter on the other side. Meanwhile, I was in luck. Yep. Beautiful. Little sooty. What a beautiful little fish. Well, here we go. Little tiny sooty grunter out of there. He's actually quite fat. I reckon they do pretty well down there. There's a couple of them in there. And he wanted that lure. So that means I'm one up. And we have video evidence to prove it on Shawnee. I'm going to release this little bloke. Thank you ever so much. You're not dinner tonight. Woohoo! You're going back where you came from. And off he goes. <laughs> How'd you go? Yeah, good, mate. We, um, we found a truck. It's the track, I think, too. It's the track? It um, hasn't been driven in years. Okay. It's um, a thick overgrowth. Yeah. It's just, we really had to keep our eyes peeled to even see where any sign of track was. Just look for oh, the, really? the place with no trees. Yeah, Still yeah, got yeah. grass like this high in some places. There's little saplings that have obviously grown. No one's driven it in, in years. Ray's decided to keep the ATV off the trailer, and he's found us a path around that massive erosion gully. I just reckon he's had enough of the 60, or even Sean's jokes. Probably both. <laughs> Where do you go? Up to the, yep, the tracks. Okay, it's back through the creek, but this time it's all of us. I might just vary my line because everyone else has been through it in front. Try and get up through here. Quite soft that sand. Really quite soft. Even with a lot less weight, combined with that trailer, Sean is struggling in the soft sand. Tell you what, I was seconds were getting stuck then. Way off in the distance, we can just about make out the dividing range, and we've got to cross that to get to the coast. But right now, this track is really closing in on us, and we've got a lot of overgrown vegetation. This, of course, is a sign that we're getting really close to a fairly substantial creek. Ray's just been for running the buggy and spotted some really soft sand going across a creek crossing. So just drop the tyres down, I'm running about 16 psi. The sand's supposed to be really soft and goes up over a ridge, so we'll have to get lots of berries and get those tyres down nice and low if we've got any chance of making it. Ray's already crossed this so he knows exactly how to tackle it. And this time, it's just for fun. Right, this is going to be difficult, I reckon. I reckon this is going to be a tricky one. 
Justin and Shane are into it. He's seen Ray tackle it, and now he's going to try and do the same. Right, right, right. Up, uh, now, up, up. Yeah! Oh. The NQ crash boys have given it a good shot, but that exit bank is just so soft. You're just going to have to drive it, mate. Don't brake, just keep driving. Justin came real close to getting into a bad position there, but he skillfully brought the back end around so that now he can take it straight back for another attempt. Keep going, keep going. We're not in a real good angle here. How about you guys come through? We're going to go back around, back out and turn around and hit it again. But you guys come through now. Rattle. OK, it's my turn in the D-Max, and it's right here that the correct tyre pressures and ample torque are really going to pay off. Shawno's up and he's concentrating hard. I mean, he's got both the 60 and the trailer to think about. Come on, mate. Come on, mate. That's it. Yeah. That's a good drive, mate. Well done. <laughs> Check I've still got a trailer on the back. Hang on. <laughs> Stu's seen that it can be done and he's into it, he's not holding back. Splashing through the creek, then onto the sand, attacking the embankment, and he's got it, he's got this. Good work, Stu. As for Justin, of course he's keen to have another go, so he's headed back across to turn around and give it another shot. But it's just not his day. Yeah, his dad is checking that was Easter, I reckon. Not me, I'm not. Hey, <laughs> Justin, I'm doing ring your missus up and tell her to have a drive. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, uh, you, you know can... this camera's still rolling. <laughs> <laughs> With mates like Shono, who needs enemies? So, would you like a hand? Because we're all going this way, mate. Yeah, that's the wrong way. <laughs> no, He's actually going the wrong way. He's facing that way. All right, so the basics are that Justin's stuck in quite a spectacular fashion. What he was doing was going back because he can't turn around here because the sand's so soft to have a second go at the hills that all of us drove with absolute ease. <laughs> so what the boys are doing right now is actually winching up a hill that isn't really that significant. I'm not a fortune teller, mate, but I reckon he's going to drive it pretty hard. He will he drive it pretty hard. I don't think he wants to get stuck for three times. In this nah, yeah. Track, stuck three, three times in two different directions on the one track, in the one obstacle. Yep. Justin has inched forward just enough to chuck the patrol in reverse and get off that bank. <laughs> With Shane back in for moral support, Justin's not messing around this time. He's heavy on the pedal and quick on the wheel, but he's made it. Good work, mate. Good work. Mate, that was softer than I thought it was going to be. Look, it was. I, the first attempt, I, w I went too far to the right, yep. probably not enough berries into it. Yep. So come back the second time, yep. second gear, yep. more, to, more to the right this time, man, straight up and over yeah, it. Flat. Just put your foot down and point that way. Flat. And hope. Yep. Let's, let's point that way and keep going. And keep going. Yep. With that challenging creek well and truly behind us, it was time to make up some Ks. But it wasn't long until day turned into night. Nonetheless, we decided to keep on pushing through this dark and dense bush. All right, it's just gone quarter past eight. We are plodding along right now with the light bars going, with the spotties going. We're keeping close watch on each other. And we're just keeping the convoy going through the night. We're gonna try and rack up a few kilometers and hopefully make up for lost time as we back and forth this afternoon. Because if I'm honest, it's really taken us a lot longer than we first thought. Tell you what though, when you're doing a night drive like this out places such as this, where there really isn't much of a track to speak of, conditions change. They really do. And I tell you what, if you don't have decent lights, 
Oh, this would be a struggle. You couldn't do this if you didn't have decent lighting. You just couldn't. Bottom line. I've got to tell you, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. With Ray pushing on up ahead, he was doing an amazing job of not only keeping us on track, but also pointing out any holes that might swallow our four-wheel drives if we fell in. Up past nine. We've lost the track. We had it, and then we got down into some low-lying grassy scrub area here. And that light you can see on me now, that's Ray out the front in the side-by-side. -side. He's coming towards us now, obviously. Who's gone out in front to see if he can't scope out where the track is because there's a huge washout. All right. 9.35. And we found the track again. Well, we've sort of found the track. And you're about to see me do some pretty radical downhill manoeuvres just now into a creek. Watch out, Mr. Crocodile. I'm coming through. Oh, and up and out of there. That's all good. Tell you what, it makes it hard at night. Whilst coming through this area of dense rainforest, I just got unlucky. I was held up on a fallen tree. Nah, I'm up on this log, guys. In no time at all, he had the Dominator hooked up, had me off that log, and I was mobile again. The path was actually pretty clear, so we decided to keep pushing into the night and further along this epic, epic bit of track. But right then, out of the dark, came this. A huge hole that we just didn't stand a chance of getting through without some significant road building. Everyone was into it, hacking away at the banks with shovels, trying to smooth them out and fill this trench. We're digging like mad. Cape York, what is it? Must be close to about 10.30 at night. Yep. Yep. And holy dolly, we need to build roads, get cars through. We, we can't camp here. <laughs> Eventually, it was just time to give it a go. Raise up first. Ray's made it, but our four-wheel drives are much longer. Turn right, turn right, turn right. That's it. Just as I thought, it's the perfect size for a four-wheel drive to get jammed between the two banks. Nothing else for it. Out with the Dominator. With the winch doing its job as we knew it would, Justin is out of the trench, but we're seeing now just how steep and rutted the climb on the other side is. This is no small obstacle, and it was getting later all the time. That's it. Last one. That's it. That's it. That's okay, my turn in the D Max. Same story, caught between the two banks. Now it's my turn to crank out the winch. I think it's the first time the winch has actually been used in anger. On the D-Max, in. Of course, between each vehicle, we dug out that bank more and more in the hope that the next four-wheel drive would make it through. That didn't happen. We all drove into the trench, got jammed up, and then winched out. This night had just turned into an epic, and we're all pretty knackered, I've got to be honest. That's the last of us three. Cape York, track that's never been driven. This is the sort of stuff I used to dream about when I should have been doing maths in high school. Love it! Take it in, mate! It got late, it got really late, and then the track opened up ever so slightly, and we decided to stop. We decided to camp right here on the track. Well, today is nearly tomorrow, <laughs> we've decided to call it for the night. So what I'm standing on right now is actually the track. As you can see, we've all bundled up in here. Everyone's on the track for the night. Plan tomorrow is to get up early, real early, and hopefully push on and stop when our wheels get wet in salty stuff. That was an insane adventure tonight. Um, absolutely wild, I don't know how many Ks we did, we did heaps. We're glad we're at camp now, it's, it's very late. It's uh, on top of some shut eye. Yeah. Get a good night's sleep because I've got a feeling we've got a lot of this tomorrow. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with insane deals on King's DIY storage and 12 volt gear to build your dream four wheel drive. Whether it's an inverter you need to run 240 volt gear on the job site or the campsite, a battery box or a 12 volt control box to easily access your power, King's 12 volt DIY gear is what you need to take your 12 volt setup to the next level. 
Need a battery? Kings has you covered with a full range of AGM, slimline and lithium batteries in sizes ranging from 98 amp hour to 200 amp hour. All built with ultra high quality components to go the distance. And of course you just can't beat King's solar panels and blankets to silently charge your batteries anytime the sun's out. At Four Wheel Drive Supercentre, you get more for less. Last night was tough, but we'd put ourselves right near the Great Dividing Range. Pretty soon we came to realise that the track was actually heading for what looked like a gap between the hills, and that made a lot of sense. If I was blazing a track through this country, I would not go over that mountain range no. if I could go through this flat stuff. Yeah. It just makes perfect sense to me. So I think we're going to head almost due east from we can around this corner here. Yep, that's Straight the right direction because that's the coast. We are in a really good position. If we hadn't pushed into the night last night, no way we would have made the coast today. So uh, it was a big effort from everyone and I think we get started up this morning. and Up early. Just head east, yeah. Follow the, uh, follow the rising sun. Sounds, Sounds like good. a cold chisel song. It does, mate. <laughs> Speaking of which. You got it on? <laughs> Let's do it, boys. Come on. It was time to make a mile. So it was back into convoy order with game faces on. It wasn't long, though, before we had the shovels back out again. You see an erosion gully had formed right the way down the track and it was just wide enough for a four wheel drive, but the drop in was insane. This is a donkey, look at this thing. This is one heck of a hole. Yes. Well, we're actually doing the right thing here, even though it looks like yeah. <laughs> we've got a destruction party out. We said to the boys, we'd come through first and help fix this track up. So we're gonna create something of a ramp here. We're filling it up with logs, yep. anything we can find. I might even put Shauno in there. He'll add a bit of a base to it. Then, I reckon we'll be good to drive down it. But what we're doing here is maintaining this track for the boys. So I reckon they're gonna be stoked. We've got a long way to go. I'm going to give the boys a hand. Sorry, little plant. Mate, too, that little dude. A bit more digging and filling, and we are pretty much ready to give this a shot. You know, I think this track is going to be up there with some of the very best in Cape York. For me, anyway, this is real adventure, and it provides some solid challenges. It's also got all of that Cape York scenery that we love. Once Dion and the Helen Enterprises put in more camp spots, I believe that this track will rival the tally track That's for the brilliant. more intrepid adventurer. It's right there, mate. The road building has worked. What a smooth descent into the erosion gully. And there he goes. Mate, that's nice now. It wasn't nice before, but it's lovely now. I won't lie, that's probably the smoothest we've driven all week. <laughs> I'm expecting to see someone up here with a flag and high vis on. We've reached yet another creek and Ray is right into it. Wow, it looks soft in there, but I tell you what, Ray has got to be having the time of his life in that thing. The exit's actually further up this creek and it was pretty hard to spot from the other end. It's a good job that Ray can scope it out and give us the heads up. The NQ Crash Boys know all about soft sand on this track by now, so they're not hanging around. It's second gear low, and through they go. Good drive lads, good drive. Now, it's the mighty D-Max. Whoa, already you can see that the base has been churned up and it's gotten a lot softer. Oh, go you good thing. That is impressive stuff. Hey, Sean, o, you are going to have to flog through that sand in the water there, mate. It is so soft, I nearly went down. Now, Sean o saw what happened to me, but there's just no avoiding it. And he too almost went down. By now that exit is wet too. That's cool. That is super cool. Stuart knows that the sand is going to be very soft indeed, so he's going hard and with momentum on his side he is through. Go, 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 go. He's almost too far <laughs> through. <laughs> Good work, mate. Yeah. Alright, let's get out of here. Finally, we've made it to the Great Dividing Range, and although we're crossing at a low point in the range, we still have to climb up some steep, slippery clay with leaf litter under our tyres. 
This would all be okay, except for the fact that some of these hills are really quite steep, they're off camber, and some have car swallowing trenches to slip into on either side. What's on the right hand side? A hole big enough to swallow a D-Max and a patrol together. <laughs> That's like the black hole of Calcutta. This is going to require some real precision driving, and we're going to be wanting for as much traction as we can get. Don't stop. One false move and we'll be in a washout and we'll be winching for sure. And that's going to cost us valuable time. It was very ballsy that drive. I'd just like to demonstrate, if I can, what was on the right hand side. So I'm just going to jump in this rut. Okay, I'm only seven foot, but this is a good rut. That's your typical Cape York rut. That's what we've got here. A typical Cape York rut. Yeah, you fall in that, you might never be seen again. Oh, you know what, we'll just be able to creep up here. Yeah, mine is perfect. The control that's offered to you by the automatic, I think it can't be beat, personally. You really got to pick your line through here. It's not that hard. If you fall, it'll be really messy. Yeah. There's that trailer. There she goes, just made it. Get up that way, stay here, stay here, don't go right, don't go right, don't go right, don't go right. Good boy. During the wet, of course, tons of water will flow down these hills, and that's what causes these washouts. But the trouble here is that the off camber slope is heading towards that rut. It's really very hard to stay out of it. Shane's behind the wheel of the patrol, and Justin's out front spotting. It's in these situations that a spotter is crucial. Now I've made it, but I wonder how Sean's going to go getting the trailer around the log on the right hand side. It's going to be tight. Yeah, Sean has done well. That's a good drive. He's got all the traction he needs and he's managed to stay clear of the rut on the left. Ah, I thought that might happen. It's going to take some heavy lifting, but the boys have got it. And that is why you bring your mates. Do not fall in the hole. Get out of the hole. Get out of the hole. Stay out of the hole. Stu's opted to straddle that rut and it's worked just fine. Good on you, mate. Certainly starting to look a lot more coastal through here. Now, I can see on the VMS we're actually coming through a bit of a gap in the Great Dividing Range. And I can see one side of the gap over there and I can see the other side of the mountain range perfectly over there. So we are right on schedule. We've got just under 10 k's to go to get to the coast, in a straight line that is. So hopefully, fingers crossed, all going well, barring no unforeseen circumstances, we should be on the coast for a coastal camp tonight. But then we came across this. It doesn't look like much, does it? But that exit right there is crazy. It's steep, totally off camber, and what's worse is that creek is very deep, just in the wrong spot. Ray only just made it without ending up in his roof, but now it's Shane's turn. We are so close to the coast right now. I mean, I can almost hear it, but we're also very remote. I don't want anything going bad right here. Whoa, whoa. Well, that was close. You see what I mean about that hole in the creek now? Shane's trying to readjust his line, but it's proving difficult. No, no, he's not got a chance. This is getting dangerous now. Time to get the Dominator out. Yeah, mate. <laughs> How about we don't roll over this close to the goal? It's not a very good position at all. I can't see anything. Nothing. Uh, hopefully the winch gets us out of here. And we won't do this again. Okay, maybe we will. Woohoo! 
We're currently three and a half k's from the coast. And this track just won't give in, as you can see. This little entry point here to get us what I believe is down off the mountain range and down onto the beach. It's got one last surprise. I say one last, but really I don't know. There could be more, but look at that. What a gnarly little section. I tell you what, Cape York, gotta love it. Have a go at that dominator doing the work right there. It's pulling an incredible weight up and out of that creek. Nice one, boys. Okay, now for the D-Max. Yeah. Oh, that's anticlimactic. Ooh, I chose a bad line there, I'll admit it. I was always going to need the winch, so I guess there's no time like the present. <laughs> No, I'm bummed about that. I'm also running the Dominator, and it's not Mr. Beat. This is going to be easy. Again, the hole in that creek is causing the front left to lift. Good job that winch is attached. I wouldn't want to be going up here without it. Bizarre sensation, that. Just come forward another metre and then I'll disconnect you. I'm up and out and I've got to tell you, I feel relieved. For sure, this is going to be a repeat job for each four wheel drive. It's just not possible to drive this. The physics just won't allow it. I don't care what truck you're in. Yeah, no. we'll winch it. The obstacles and the challenges on this track have been plentiful. And this one has just got to take the cake. It's funny though, because the more things that get thrown our way, the more we become determined to reach that coast. It's not only about our pride and our achievement of getting to the coast, it's about you guys. We want to prove that it can be done and that this will be one of the most iconic Cape tracks in the future. That's it, we stew safely through. I'm hoping that we'll be hitting the sand and smelling that salt air soon. Suddenly, there it was, a sight for sore eyes. It was that distinctive flat horizon line of the ocean peeking its way through the scrub. We'd made it. What an awesome feeling. And here's the water, fellas. Here's the water. Look at that. That's the ocean. Oh, you're kidding me. We've travelled so far to come here. Unbelievable. Mate, that is sensational. Such a privilege to be here, eh? Dion was telling me the crocodiles come right out on the beach here, sit on the edge. She's wild and windy. <laughs> How good is this? It was just a short drive up the East Coast Beach and we'd arrived at our goal, the mouth of Stony Creek. How cool is this? This is not a huge creek, but it is pristine, untouched. This place would only see a handful of visitors every few years. And now it's our turn. Buddy, good job. From the months of planning way back to standing here on the coast, this has been one of those trips I'll never forget. And behind the scenes, it was a full team effort to make it this far. This is the sort of trip that four-wheel drive action is all about. And it's for you guys that we do this. I'm so stoked to have been a part of what has been a truly, truly memorable trip. Good work, Sean, eh? Mate, if you could just get one about three times as big, that'd be perfect, we put on the barbie. Well, folks, as you can see, the weather's come in. There is a little bit of sunlight on the horizon, so I'm hoping that comes across and joins us. But for now, though, we're gonna try and catch a few fish, then we're gonna get off this beach and find a bit of shelter. I don't care if it's raining. We've made it out to the East Coast once again, in Cape York on a track that hasn't been driven for several years. We've cleared the track now for Dion and the boys. More importantly though, what I'm really hoping is, we've cleared the track for all of you folks as well. I really do hope that Dion is able to open this up and let everybody access this part of the East Coast because this is absolute paradise. I might see you out here, because I'm definitely coming back. Probably won't though. Definitely catch you next time on four wheel drive action. Now, excuse me, I'm gonna go and teach Sean how to fish. Forget building your own set of storage drawers or paying well over $1,000 for a set elsewhere. And get your hands on a set of incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money, Titan storage drawers. Our entire range of Titan storage drawers have been built to handle just about anything you can throw at them. 
All models of Titan Double Drawers come with an included built-in fridge slide on the left-hand side, saving you up to $200 compared to some other brands that charge extra for a fridge slide. Each draw top also has these heavy-duty spring-loaded tie-down points to secure your gear on even the most corrugated roads. We've put them through their paces like none other. We've jumped on them, overloaded them with bricks, chucked an engine on the drawers at full extension, absolutely flooded them and used them off-road year after year to prove just how tough they are. The Titan 900 single drawer is perfect for those who have limited space to install a storage drawer. It has internal dimensions of 430 millimeters wide, 790 millimeters long, and 190 millimeters deep. The Titan 900 double drawer setup is ideal for smaller wagons like Prados, Pajeros, and SUVs, with the internal dimensions identical to the 900 single drawer on each side. The Titan 1300 ute drawers are made specifically for vans and utes. The internal dimensions are 1200 millimeters long, 430 millimeters wide, and 150 millimeters high. The 1300mm single drawers are also a cracking addition to the back of vans and utes. The internal dimensions are the same as the double 1300 drawers, but have an extra 40mm of depth, making them 190mm deep. And finally, for the bigger wagons like Land Cruisers and Patrols, the double 1070 storage drawers have internal dimensions of 880mm long, 470mm wide, and 180mm of depth. They come 95% pre-assembled, and all you need to install them is a couple of basic hand tools and a couple of hours on a lazy Sunday Arvo. You can also add optional wing kits, both model specific and DIY. So you can finish off the back of your four wheel drive and have plenty of storage available for your next adventure. Take your setup to the next level with the incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money, Titan Storage Drawers. If you're after a next level 12 volt upgrade for your vehicle or your next camping trip, then check this out. The Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. This uses high capacity, brand new grade A lithium iron phosphate cells capable of thousands of cycles. It's paired with a high quality BMS able to output up to 160 amps of current. The future of 12 volt setups is here. Lithium batteries are super lightweight and still have heaps of power capacity. In fact, this battery weighs just over 15 kilos. That's about half as much as a similar capacity AGM. But that's not all. Lithium batteries have the ability to use their entire capacity from 100 to 0% and still have an incredibly long life. The reason Adventure King's lithium batteries are so good is because they use lithium iron phosphate chemistry. That means if you're using the entire 120 amp hours of capacity in this battery every day, it would still last almost five and a half years. Some cheap lithium batteries use grade B or even secondhand cells to keep the cost down, but not here. Adventure King's lithium iron phosphate batteries use brand new grade A prismatic cells. When these batteries are assembled, each individual cell is matched with others and then grouped. Then those cells are balanced, which means that these batteries always function at their best and ensure you have full capacity. Another major feature of these Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium batteries is the high quality internal battery management system. This BMS for short takes care of the individual cells. It balances them while you're charging your battery. It prevents overcharge, over discharge, over temperature and short circuits. A high quality BMS is so important and it's also incredibly important to match the BMS to the cells and the use of the battery. A good indicator of a high quality BMS is to look for high current discharge and charge ratings. This battery is capable of charging and discharging constantly at up to 100 amps and it can do a peak discharge of 160 amps of current. A high discharge current and a high peak discharge current are very important if you want to run things like inverters that need a lot of power when they turn on to fill the capacitors. If you're looking at a battery that has a much lower charge and discharge rate, they could be cost cutting by using a cheaper BMS. Lithium iron phosphate is a safe technology, unlike some other lithium chemistries, and Adventure King's lithium batteries are doubly safe. Not only are they sealed and safe to use in your vehicle, they've also passed a short circuit test, overcharge test, over temperature test, and a vibration test. So they're ready to be put to use. 
Some lithium batteries are extremely sensitive to hot and cold temperatures, and they can be damaged or destroyed by trying to use them. Adventure King's batteries though can be charged anywhere from zero to 50 degrees Celsius and used or discharged anywhere from negative 20 right through to plus 60 degrees Celsius. They use threaded M8 terminals for high power output and easy connection. Measuring it at 330 millimeters long by 162 millimeters wide and 215 millimeters tall, they fit perfectly in an Adventure King's battery box for a lightweight and powerful portable power station. And with 120 amp hours on tap, you could run a camping fridge for five or even six days. Or you can permanently install them in your vehicle for a next level, super powerful setup that barely weighs anything. And for that reason, they're perfect for your full drive, motorhome, caravan, or camper trailer, where you need to be concerned about GVM and GCM limits. So if you want a safe, lightweight, super powerful, and super long lasting lithium battery for your next level setup, you can't beat an Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. Introducing the incredible Adventure King's premium camp oven stove your new best mate for delicious barbecue or campfire cooking and warm, cozy fires whether you're at home in your backyard or at your favorite campsite. Let me show you all the things that I absolutely love about it and I'm sure you're gonna love too. This amazing bit of gear has been designed right here in Australia and it combines a camping stove and a portable barbecue into one. It can run off multiple fuel sources, wood, heat beads, charcoal, briquettes and more. When it's time to cook up a feast, you can fit two large pots or pans on this huge flat cooktop surface that measures in at 520 millimeters long by 300 millimeters wide. That's enough space to cook up a feast for the entire family. And because it runs on wood or heat beads, you can leave the gas bottle behind, one less thing to pack. And when you want a beautiful roaring campfire, use the included hook tool to simply lift the two piece lid off completely and just add in some more firewood. The raised and closed design means you won't risk scorching your grass, your deck, or even your driveway. And you'll be able to use it for a beautiful warm fire at campsites that don't allow open ground fires. Plus, your fire would last longer because you're closer to the heat. Now that's cozy. The enclosed design means it's super efficient and you can make the most of your fuel by directing the heat exactly where you want it. You can even adjust the temperature of your fire by varying the airflow. With these sliding vents on the side, a two-piece removable lid on top, and an adjustable flue, you're always in control. Remove the entire lid for an open fire, or just this circular inner piece if you need extra heat for cooking, like searing steaks to finish them off. And this up here, now that is a real game changer. A chimney that extends over 2.4 meters off the ground to direct smoke away from your campsite for smoke-free campfires. You can even position the premium camp oven stove under your awning, your gazebo, or your shed for maximum warmth. And the angular offset chimney piece allows smoke to funnel away rather than getting trapped underneath. There's even a spark arrestor on top for good measure. There are so many more things to absolutely love about the King's premium camp oven stove. It's been designed to be super sturdy with these four large legs that extend the footprint a foot wider in both directions for excellent stability. The legs simply screw into the bottom like this and you can remove the middle piece for a lower fire. This huge access door swings open with the included hook tool to allow you to easily refill the premium camp oven stove as required. Inside, you've got this fuel rack that keeps your wood or your charcoal up off the floor, maximizing airflow and preventing wasted heat. It's a breeze to transport, set up and pack down too with no tools required. Each of the four two-piece legs simply screw together and the chimney pieces pack into each other with everything fitting into the main body of the premium camp oven stove for simple transport. Make sure you don't miss the incredible genuine cooking accessories available too, like a proper wood-fired meat smoker and a clever barbecue hot plate set to really take your camp cooking to the next level. And a stainless steel water boiler too. Whether I'm at home in my backyard or out camping with family, my mates, or even by myself, I absolutely love my Adventure King's premium camp oven stove. It's a portable fire pit, it's a wood or charcoal barbecue, and it's the centerpiece of every backyard get together or camping adventure, and I know you're gonna love yours too.
introducing the insane new Adventure King's 9-inch lethal LED driving lights. These things have an amazing combination of both spot and flood light. They have 21,840 lab-proven effective lumens per pair. That's over 2,000 more than the previous generation. Plus, they have huge light distance performance with one lux at over 1.3 kilometers. These are the LED driving lights that other lights wish they were. You asked and we listened. You said you wanted even more flood of light out of your LED driving lights to light up the sides of the road, the highway and the tracks. We went back to the drawing board to redesign the lethal LED driving lights to produce exactly that. At the same time, we upgraded the lights to the ridiculously tough King's laser light die-cast aluminium housings and 3mm folded steel mounts. So not only are these some of the brightest LED driving lights we've ever sold, but they're also the toughest. How bright? Try a lab-proven 21,840 lumens per pair and one lux of 1,342 meters. That's real-world lumens too, not the theoretical lumens that some lights claim they produce. That's thanks to the genuine German-designed Osram LEDs for simply unparalleled light performance. We've also re-engineered the lethal lights with a new 5,185 Kelvin color temperature. That means they're just a little bit more on the softer, warmer side. Still a clear, crisp white light, but that little bit easier on the eyes when driving long distances. And of course, you get all the features and quality you'd expect from Adventure King's driving lights, like polycarbonate lenses, the same stuff riot shields and fighter jet canopies are made of, and an IP68 water and dustproof rating, meaning these lights are waterproof to a depth of a metre for an hour. Plus, for the first time ever, they're rated to IP69K. That means they can withstand high-pressure jets of hot water. That tough die-cast alloy housing features passive cooling fins and a waterproof breather for longevity, and they have the ability to run on both 12 and 24 volt, meaning they're suitable for everything from cars and four-wheel drives to trucks and machinery. Including the brackets, they measure 250 millimeters high, 230 millimeters wide, and 115 millimeters deep. They have an attachment system that uses two 8mm bolts on either side to positively lock them in place and prevent them from falling out of alignment. And of course, they use the same plug as all previous Adventure King's lights, which makes them an easy 10 minute upgrade. Just unplug your old lights, bolt the new ones on, plug them in and you're ready to go. Add in a two year warranty and you've got a simply incredible set of lights that leave the competition looking a little underwhelming. The Adventure King's 9-inch lethal LED driving lights are the best value LED driving lights on the market. We've re-engineered them to be incredibly tough and incredibly bright. They'll turn night into day, and they're on sale right now for a price you have to see to believe. You asked and we've listened. The incredible MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer has just received an ATM upgrade to two tonnes. All new Adventure Kings MT1 camper trails will now come with the new upgraded two ton ATM. But don't worry if you already own an MT1 because a retrofit upgrade kit is available too. The MT1 is already an ultra tough trailer with a one piece 150 by 50 mil chassis that extends right from the drawbar all the way to the back of the trailer. Now it's even tougher with upgraded suspension, bearings, brakes and wheels to bring it up to a two ton ATM. The brakes are upgraded from 10 inch to 12 inch electric brakes. The alloy rims are now rated to two ton ATM and an upgraded set of suspension arms also suit the upgraded ATM. And for existing owners, the retrofit upgrade is incredibly easy to do at home yourself. Everything just bolts onto the trailer with no modifications needed. That extra payload capacity means that you've got more ability than ever before to carry the gear that you need and still remain legal. For more information and full detailed specs on the MT1, see the Four Wheel Drive Supercenter website. Now with a two ton ATM upgrade, the Adventure Kings MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer can carry more gear than ever before.